Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for taking the time this afternoon to join us um, on our Scotland Loves Local webinar. Um, we're going to be talking to you this afternoon about maximising the Scotland Loves Local gift card. I'm going to hand over to Phil Prentice, Chief Executive for uh, Scotland's Towns Partnership, who will open the webinar, hand over to Colin, Colin Monroe from uh, MyConnex, and we'll close the session off um, in half an hour. All question and answers will be taken throughout the chat and the Q&A box, and we'll distribute those after the session. Thank you very much. Kimberly, thanks very much, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Kimberly's pointed out, this is really to focus in on the town and city gift card and to answer any questions you might have. Just to give you a wee bit of context in terms of the gift card, uh, this is part of the overall Scotland Loves Local programme. It's part of uh, the National Recovery brand. So it is really important that we hook into this brand, albeit a national brand, you can then put your slant on it locally. And we've seen the impact that the Town and City gift card has had across the country with some of our really interesting Pathfinder projects, a great way to support local economic recovery, a great way to support low income households, you know, to deal with the cost of living crisis, et cetera. And that's really the, um, the, the guiding policy intent with the flexible 80 million pound COVID recovery fund. It is really primarily around local economic recovery and trying to mitigate the uh, cost of living crisis, particularly from uh, people with low income households. So could we move on to the next slide, please? Uh, basically the rationale behind this, whenever we launched the um, brand, it was at the height of the pandemic, July, June, July, 2020, we weren't sure how long we were going to be in a pandemic. We understood that things were under severe stress and there was a massive amount of disruption, unprecedented. But we wanted to come up with something positive and something that the country could own. And obviously that's why the Scotland Loves Local brand came about. It's quite smart in terms of the heart indicating um, you know, the love, but also designed by GPS to show that it, it, it's local. And the beauty of the brand is that you can then localize it by putting, I don't know, Paisley, Dumbarton, uh, Oban, or whatever. So the, the gift card was a part was a part of the um, the overall program. We had to move very quickly with our tech provider, My Connection. We're going to hear from Colin shortly. The Scottish government uh, granted us some additional funding to try and get the town and city gift card uh, platform up and running in partnership with My Connect's EML MasterCard. So it's really to look at how we could consolidate on the two big behaviours that the pandemic had created and net zero had created, which was just basically the localism. People were living more, um, living more locally, being educated locally, working locally. So the idea was then to how can we consolidate that post pandemic as we enter into a climate emergency landscape where genuinely there's going to be a societal reset and people will spend more time in their local economies. So how can we encourage good behaviours to lock that money in to the local economy, to be able to target it, whether it's for volunteers, or people in the care sector, young people, vulnerable people, or just generally as an economic stimulus. So that was the rationale behind it. And we had to move very quickly in order to get that infrastructure up. But if you think about the potential, you know, it's limitless. We've had conversations now with uh, Transport Scotland, Network Rail, Scott Rail, basically about wider deployment the higher and further education sectors in terms of uh, using it for hardship or as an incentive to try and reduce dropout from uh, further education in particular. So there's a whole range of different deployments, um, food poverty, et cetera, that we've seen with um, East Ayrshire. So having this infrastructure in place nationally allows you to move a lot faster at the local level. And we have set up 32 programmes across Scotland where the local authorities can all plug into. Next slide, please, Holly. So I think it is important that uh, the Scottish Government were really behind this. Whilst the idea came from Scotland's Towns Partnership, it was part of that wider story of the brand, which quickly developed into a national campaign. That campaign was taking up prime time slots on STV Borders Television. We used national media, we used social media, and we, we reached somewhere between 3.5 to 4 million of our population. And you only have to go out into a town or city centre and you'll see the branding um, in, in many of our shops and, and, and businesses. So people really align to it. It's a brand that folk actually can see some positivity with. And they, the more they get to know about it, the more they like it, because it is basically about um, economic 
uh, local economic recovery. So we've managed to get the majority of our local authorities signed up. So far, we've got over three and a half thousand merchants, but every day that number just continues to grow. We have our platform, which is lovelocal.scot, but we also have a dedicated gift card platform, which is scotlandgiftslocal.com. And you, if you go onto these websites, you can actually find out how simple it is to, um, to either buy a card as a gift for someone or for a retailer or merchant to sign up. Um, it's quite a straightforward process. Next slide, please, come on. So the First Minister, as part of the uh, Omicron consequentials, the First Minister went out to the Business Improvement District in Edinburgh on the 21st of February and announced the flexible uh, local authority economic COVID recovery fund. Now that's basically going to be dispersed to local government, but there are clear indications in terms of what the government would like to see in terms of policy outcome. And that is about local economic recovery. And uh, the flexibility part is basically each part of Scotland is going to need a different response. There are some commonalities, the likes of the gift card, for example, but you know, it's up to the local authorities to decide what they see fit in terms of what their local economy and what their local communities need. So there is that high level of flexibility. And STP's role in all of this is basically just here to help you. If you want to engage with the platform, if you want to sign up for the card, if you want to um, invest in, in, in any of this, you know, you just need to engage with ourselves and our stakeholders and we'll guide you through all of that process. That's basically what the Scottish Government fund us to do. But I think there's a massive opportunity here in terms of using the town and city gift card as a direct economic stimulus into your local economies. What you'll be doing is securing the spend. You'll be developing a significant multiplier effect. You're, you're, you're safeguarding employment. But you're also being seen by your businesses as being very supportive and you can target those businesses or individuals who have been hit particularly hard through um, the pandemic and also through the cost of the rising cost of living crisis. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can deploy it. And uh, as I said, we're just here to help. So I'm going to introduce you to Colin now. Colin Monroe, who's the managing director of MyConnex. And Colin's going to take you through the detail in terms of what the gift card can do. Um, as I said, it's a service STP and Scottish Government have developed we're more than happy for you guys to um, to engage with us and we'll help you in terms of getting it up and running as quickly as we can. So over to Colin. Thanks very much, Phil. Um, good afternoon, everyone. So the, the important thing to, to emphasize here, I think, is that these, these gift cards run on the, the MasterCard rails, which makes it really easy for uh, both merchants to register to accept the money when people come in to spend them. And also easy for you know customers, cardholders to to go out there um, and get spend the money in local businesses. Um, so yeah, and they're unique. You know, each of the programs are linked to a specific network of local merchants, local businesses that are registered, and that can be across all sectors. Um, and so if I've got you know hundred pounds know, East Lothian gift card, I can only spend that in registered East Lothian businesses. So that keeps that that money local. Um, and it's, but it's the, what happens next bit that's really interesting for me, I think. You know, what happens when someone receives a gift card? What do they do? Well, you know, what they have to do is have a look. They have to look locally to see what um, they can spend that, that money on. And they need to get out of their house or leave their workplace to do that. They need to go into town, you know, and then when they do it, they use that opportunity to explore. 43% of the gift card recipients make a one-off purchase a new brand. And that's great. And then 22% of them go on to become regular customers. So you're kind of given the, every opportunity, if you like, to the, the businesses to, you know, to get someone walking through the door, new customer with money to spend. It's over to them really to, to, to create that lifetime customer. Um, and on, on average, people spend 65% more than the value that they've been given. So that's great as well. So you're, you're taking this, this money, people are receiving, they're getting out, and then they're spending more of their own money on top of the, the money that they've received. And this happens immediately. You know, when people get these gift cards, they get out, you know, 50% of the recipients spend within one month. So what I kind of always wanted us to think about is there's two parts to this. There's the, the recipient journey. You know, what happens when someone receives it? And we just talked about that exploration, overspend, um, and immediate kind of uh, getting out of your house and workplaces to spend money in town centres. 
So what we wanted to look at at this webinar is some examples really of how these cards, other than the obvious, you know, gifting can be, can, we can get these out there into circulation because all of the good stuff happens automatically when we achieve that. So what we're going to look at is, you know, disbursement, support for local low-income households. We're going to look at some case studies around um, employers, um, incentives and rewards for staff. We're going to look at how to kind of directly drive football into, football into town centres. And we're going to look at how you might want to target specific sectors of the economy. Thanks. Next slide, please. So the first use case example we're going to look at is the community disbursement. The money can be loaded onto cards and given to people in need of additional support. For example, families in receipt of school, free school meals, households that receive council tax discounts, youths in receipt of Young Scott National Entitlement cards. The great thing about this is when, when the people receive it, there's no stigma attached to it. There's no markers. You know, they've got a gift card. No one knows how they got that and they can go out and spend it. And what we're going to hear from next is a video case study from East Ayrshire Council who have done just that. Tracy Murray, who you're going to hear for, is the Town Centre Regeneration Officer. And uh, Tracy leads on the East Ayrshire gift cards and was instrumental to the delivery of the disbursement initiative. And we're also going to hear from Katrina Cochran, who's the Communication Officer at East Ayrshire Council. So um, that actually came from um, elected members and, and senior officers who recognised that there, there could be a bigger role for the gift cards um, and it had several benefits by, by doing this. So um, there was a hardship payment from Scottish Government that went out at, at Christmas um, that also included a food box and those were um, to families whose children received free school meals. Yeah. So the council decided to contribute to that and put in a £20 gift card. The beauty of <coughs> that is that, first of all, it's given a wee bit of extra support to families that need that. Um, it's also given them the freedom to be flexible with their own money and choose how best to spend that based on their own particular family needs. Mm -hmm. So nobody's, you know, nobody's no having a voucher for a single shop mm -hmm. and saying, well, you have to shop here and these are the things that you can get. Yeah. So, you know, it's all about giving people that dignity to, mm -hmm. uh, and the power, it's, it's empowering people to be, mm -hmm. you know, responsible for their own their own finance. Mm -hmm. um, what we found from that it was really interesting, just looking mm -hmm. at the statistics of, you know, looking at the redemptions, where people were spending. Straight away, um, those gift cards went, were given out round about the 21st of December um, 2020. And immediately, um, I've got a really good relationship with our local Marks and Spencers. So they were feeding back to me straight away. They had an influx of people who were buying really, you know, good Christmas dinners. So it may well be that that family might not have had just as good a Christmas dinner, but they, you know, that year they did, they were able to contribute more money towards it and have something, you know, a really nice Christmas with their family. Um, we found that there were gift shops that were telling us that they had kids in buying their parents gifts for Christmas, which again, that might be the first time those kids have been able to do that. And what a feeling for them, you know, to, to, it's, it, you know, it makes me emotional still every yeah, time I think yeah, about it. Because yeah. I just love that they were mm -hmm. able to do that. Um, we, Marks and Spencer's also fed back that once the, the Christmas shopping um, passed, the next biggest thing they were spending them on was school clothes. Um, the, the example that I tell absolutely everybody about is. Um, a tire and exhaust business. 
and thus tire and exhaust business were one of the first businesses to sign up for the gift card. And I remember distinctly thinking, well, that's brilliant, somebody's signed up, but oh my God, I don't know, is this going to be a benefit to you? But absolutely, people were making their cars road, road safe. So, you know, it was giving people the chance, you know, to, to use that money in a way that suited them. For some people, it was, they, they needed to be able to get to work. They needed to be able to transport their kids safely. So they were getting, you know, that money went towards helping make their car safe. Great. Thank you very much for that. I mean, we don't have a lot of time today, but what a, you know, fantastic initiative. And, you know, what comes shining through there for me is the, the choice that it gives to the recipient and the, and the dignity that goes with that. Um, the next opportunity we wanted to look at was how this type of programme can be used to work with local employers. How can these be used to, to reward staff or perhaps welcome them back into the office? Um, you know, you can see there, there's demand here, you know, 81% of companies offer a non-staff reward to staff, and a lot of those are Amazon gift cards, let's face it, and we've got the opportunity here to, to kind of get that money spent locally, and also, you know, the employer, the employees that receive them are going to get the choice of where they can spend it right across their, their local area, so it works not just from a CSR perspective, but also from an, an employee benefits perspective. Um, this can be, you know, we've seen these cars then used and attached to, you know, active travel initiatives, you know, so what is the, what do I get for doing this is always the question, the burn part, the earn part is quite, you know, more achievable, but, you know, then connecting that to the local economy makes perfect sense. I'm going to hear now from Peter Telfer, who's the Managing Director of Urquhart Opticians, and he's the Chair of the Kilmarnock Business Association, and he's going to talk a little bit about why he has used the gift card programme for his staff. You play the next uh, video please. So if you're happy to maybe tell us a little bit about Burkhart Opticians if that's okay Peter and then tell us why you decided to use Scotland's local gift cards to reward your staff. So Urquhart Opticians we're an independent opticians uh, based in the southwest of Scotland. We have seven practices in Ayrshire and we also have a practice down in Dumfries and Galloway in Stranraer. We, have, we were originally established in 1916. I'm, I'm the managing director alongside my business partner, Alistair Duff, who is the clinical director. And we have a, a team of 42 staff um, working across all eight of the locations that, that we have. We decided to use the Scotland Loves Local gift card for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, I should say that I'm also the chair of the Kamalit Business Association and the East Ayrshire gift card has been a fantastic success story across the, the complete council of East Ayrshire, but specifically in Kamalit. Uh, we've had some fantastic engagement with the gift card, the number of businesses who've signed up to it um, as well. But one of the key reasons from a business perspective that we use the Scotland Loves Local gift card as a reward is because we would consider ourselves to be a values driven business. And one of our values is care and community. And most of our practices are based in market towns, in market and coastal towns. And we rely on local people to use our services. And therefore, within our business, we do try to promote a very strong message of also using local services within the towns where employees work. And we thought at Christmas time, a fantastic way to show appreciation for the hard work of the staff um, over the, the, the year 2021, which was still obviously very challenging because of the pandemic. We thought it would be appropriate to buy all the team members a gift voucher as a token of our appreciation. And I think in doing so, it was great that we could tie it together with that shop local message. And instead of just getting perhaps a gift voucher that yes, was for a local business, see a restaurant, it allowed us to give a gift card that had a complete variety. So we could go to the local gift shop, we could we could use it in the, the local pharmacy. Even if we wanted to, to, to buy things, we could use it in a local restaurant. There was so many options that were there for us. And, and because we have practices in different geographical areas, it was a great way of, of doing essentially the same thing, but with a local focus um, across our whole team. And it was very well received by the whole team 
um, the gift cards that we provided us. We run relatively small scale incentives. Um, you know, it can be things like the team member who gets a, a really great five star review on social media or perhaps on, on Google as an example. And we like to reward those things. And we've been using the Scotland Loves local gift cards to do that as well. So there's lots of different places that could be done. Yes, we did it at Christmas, but we have been using it as ad hoc incentives throughout the year as well. Fantastic. And lastly, Peter, why do you think organisations should consider using Scotland's local gift cards for their staff rewards or for their employee welcome back initiatives? Because it's really easy to transact, you know, from us. If, if, if you work in a centralised office, you can go on the website, you can buy them for, for every location. Um, so I think that's the first point from a from a financial perspective for a business. It's it's easy to do, and they're nicely presented. The cards um, they come with the wallets, etc. You know, it looks it looks nice. It's a nice thing to put in someone's hand. But I think also because really for the reasons that I've stated around a uh, community wealth building at a local level. Um, love to shop vouchers, you could go and use it online and that money funnels its way into a national company. If you're buying that local gift card, you're making a difference to that person three doors down from you. And the stronger you can make that person three doors down from you, that is going to have a knock on effect in your business because they will reciprocate or they might have um, more money to do up their shop front, improve their product and that in turn drives more people into the town centre. So all these benefits that, that kind of feed off that are really, really important. Um, and, and I think the final reason is because staff love them and there's really good choice. It means you're not narrowing down choice for people. Um, and, and that's great. You know, I think as an employer, you want to do something that your team value. There's no worse feeling than giving a team member something. And the first reaction you get is, oh, I don't actually like going there or I wouldn't actually really use that because of such and such. You cover that, the gift card covers that, there is something in it for everybody, and therefore um, it's a, it's a well-received gift. So as you, you heard there that Peter's purchased these, you know, these cards for his staff and this kind of activity could be, you know, significantly increased. I think if, you know, the cards were, were offered to employers, you know, potentially at a discount and then they can use it to to welcome staff and um, potentially back to the workplace or, or if they've been in, you know, there's no better time, no more need than now to, to thank people um, with this type of programme. So the next option that we wanted to, to, to look at was, you know, working directly with consumers and just driving, you know, spend into, into um, local businesses. Um, you know, as you know, the, the gift cards are already available online via the, the, the Scotland Loves Local and Town City gift card platforms. If these um, cards were made available at a discount or even buy one, get one free, you can ask yourself, would you buy one? You know, and then what would you do? Would you get out and go out and spend it? And there's loads of other ways buying one with free money back for spend. So East Lothian, one of our clients there, Gemma, um, she's used it, they've used the East Lothian gift card in, in just such a way. So she says in a case study that's available on the website, as our high streets reopened in 2021 through 22, a number of East Lothian towns are running their own promotions supported by East Lothian Council to drive footfall using the East Lothian gift card. In Musselboro, for example, Musselboro Business Partnership is offering a five pound East Lothian gift card to spend in any of the registered businesses as a reward for spending 20 pounds in town. So activities like this uh, contribute to the sense of community engagement with the gift card and the shop local message. So, you know, make, getting these uh, cards into circulation uh, is the key because uh, the local spend happens automatically after that. Next slide, thanks. The fourth and last area to explore is how to use this to um, drive spend into a particular area of the economy. We're going to look at a tourism case study from one of our programmes over in Canada, in the Prince Edward Island. Um, but really, this type of approach could be applied to lots of uh, different um, sectors. Um, so um, we're running short in time, we'll just move straight to this video. 
Hello, I'm Crystal McGregor. Can you hear that okay? Island Partnerships Director yes. of Marketing and Communications. And we are delighted to be here with you today to share with you our success using Canada's Food Island gift card to help stimulate economic development here on beautiful Prince Edward Island. We do believe that seeing is believing. So let's just see where you can experience a Canada Food Island gift card here locally on the island. Check it out. So there's a really quick snapshot on how you can discover Canada's Food Island using our Canada Food Island gift card. So now let's dive into the details. We put together a quick executive summary just to show a little bit about what this gift card program meant to Prince Edward Island. So on beautiful PEI, we have 165,000 people. Um, that's our population here. To date, since we launched the gift card in 2020, we've received over 4.8 million in government funding. Now this government funding was given to help support economic development, especially during the pandemic times. Now, to date, over the last 18 months, we've sold over 100,000 Canada Food Island gift cards. Now, these were used to be leveraged as incentives for tourist accommodations, as well as consumer sales. And to date, in our Canada Food Island directory, we have over 335 local merchants who have signed up to participate in our program. And what we love about this program is that it really is a foolproof way to ensure that consumers are supporting and buying local. So we know that when people are using our Canada Food Island gift card, whether it's for local food, um, restaurants, accommodations, or even tourism experiences, that the money is staying local here on Prince Edward Island. Now, the top three benefits that we had with the Canada Food mm -hmm. Island gift card was increasing incre incremental consumer spend. And we've heard anecdotally from some of our retailers that it could in increase the consumer spend up to about 25%. It also increases Prince Edward Island, Canada's Food Island brand awareness and engagement with our consumer. And it also helped with the COVID-19 recovery to help ensure that we're supporting local businesses here. Now, given our great success that we've seen with this card, our future plans are to continue to have government support for the expansion of the Canada Food Island gift card program, just given the success that we've seen. Now, here's a couple of examples of the campaigns that we were able to run. So one uh, monumental uh, campaign was incentives for tourist accommodations. So our objective was to leverage government funding to help drive accommodations during the tourist shoulder seasons. Uh, we were hoping for a target of about 75% redemption rate. And throughout our programming, we've seen the actual redemption rate be on average about 80%. So the first campaign you can see on the screen here is called Stay and Savor. This is where we issued a, a 5,000 gift cards. And this is where tourist operators were able to purchase that gift card at a 40% off discount. Now that discount was funded by the government. So the government did pay that 40% and provided us with $100,000 to deliver this program. And then with the tourist uh, operators, they took that gift card and then they created their own customized experiences and packages that they could then pass on to their consumers. With any new program that you're going to launch, we had a lot of learnings of what worked well and how we can continuously improve. So the campaign uh, improved and it, it, it changed to best meet the needs of our consumers and best support our tourist operators. So we evolved that campaign to be a stay to and get a $100 Canada Food Island gift card. Now we ran this program in spring 2021. We also ran this program again in fall 2021 and we're gearing up to run this program in spring 2022 this year to help drive that incremental bookings in our shoulder season before we gear up to our, our peak season. Now, this was, as I mentioned, when the consumer stays two nights, they get a free $100 Canada Food Island gift card to use while they're here. It was 100% funded by the government. So to date, we had 28,000 cards in circulation. We received over $2.8 million in government funding. And we did uh, see that this did drive incremental bookings during the shoulder season with an 80% redemption rate using that gift card while they were here on, our stay, on, on their stay. 
As mentioned, we also did some promotions to help increase consumer spending. Um, so we did 20% off retail sales. These cards were available at select retails, retailers across the island, and we've leveraged over four successful campaigns throughout the year. We targeted times where consumer might be uh, holding on to some of that spending. So we targeted it during back to school season. Gifting season was another um, important part time for us as well. So the consumer spent 40 and they actually got a $50 gift card. This was very popular during gift giving seasons because you could boost your holiday spending, which you spend less and give more. And it was great that they could be redeemed at over 300 local merchants across this wonderful island. And we followed this up with redemption campaigns. Now the redemption campaigns, we used influencers and local food advocates where they actually showcased using Instagram reels and stories and Facebook um, and blogs of how they were enjoying Canada's Food Island gift cards to go out and dine, experience a tourism culinary destination experience or stay at accommodations, which we found very successful. The redemption rate of our cards have been about 57%, which is pretty good for a gift card um, once we have them on, on sale, following up with a redemption campaign. We also use the Canada Food Island gift card to help increase brand awareness and engagement that Prince Edward Island truly is Canada's food island and a premier culinary destination. Now, as I mentioned before, we use these redemption campaigns using local food advocates and influencers so we can help expand our reach, um, increasing our brand awareness and also engaging with their, um, with their followers as well. It promoted Prince Edward Island as Canada's food island as being a premier culinary destination, and it was also leveraged in social media marketing as well. So there you have it is a snapshot of how we've used Canada's Food Island, Prince Edward Island's gift card to work for us to help stimulate economic development supported by local here on beautiful Prince Edward Island. And we're wishing you much success with any future programming that you might be doing in Scotland. And to know that we here at Food Island Partnership are here to answer any of your questions and support you on your journey as you explore what this great gift card can do for you. Thanks for tuning in. Great stuff. So I'll just um, say a few words and hand it back over to Kimberly. Um, I love, you know, Prince Edward Island, they've just taken this kind of tool and run with it, as you can tell. And they are super friendly, like um, all of our Canadian clients, um, and they're more than happy to speak to anyone about their experience in the program. I think uh, what they've put in there is an infrastructure, and then they're using it for, for several use cases. One of the ones that I love most is the, you know, the accommodation providers purchasing them at a discount and then using them to incentivize more bed nights. And then when the recipient arrives, they get a, a welcome pack with a Canada's Food Island gift card and they have to go out and they have to look where to spend it and they can only spend that money on the island. So it's ticking a lot of boxes there. Um, and I think that type of approach can be applied to, to different sectors. I think in Scotland, what we've got now is the same infrastructure. We've got the infrastructure, we've got the tools, we've got an opportunity here to, to come up with their own ways of driving local spend. So thank you very much. Over to Kimberly. Thank you very much, Colin. Um, and thank you everybody for your time today um, and listening about the um, 80 million COVID um, economic recovery fund. We're, we're here to help you develop some innovative solutions uh, to local challenges that you may have across local authorities and other areas. And that's the role of STP and connecting all of this together. Um, we see the Scotland Loves Local gift card as being more than just um, a tactical response, but more of a, a local currency that's got, you know, future opportunity and benefit as we go through the next two, three years. The Scotland Loves Local programme is a five-year commitment. Um, it comes with a campaign, a gift card and a fund. Um, and we are working through that this year with Scottish Government in terms of what the opportunity is for next year. Um, but as we say, there definitely is huge opportunity. Um, Phil's touched on um, many of the, the sort of key drivers to local economic uh, stimulus. Colin shared with us some real good case studies that really opens up some ideas and suggestions in and around about driving footfall, how we can use it for corporate reward and award, how we can use it effectively across community disbursement, and interestingly, how we can use it to devolve sector support. Um, so again, between myself and Nicola, we're, always, we're on hand for any one-to-ones or any further discussions. 
Uh, we'll be following up today with a Q&A. Uh, we'll be linking, to, linking that to a, a, a recorded version of the webinar, um, and we'll make sure that all questions that are on the chat and the Q&A are fully answered. One that I will just like to raise is that there's been a few bits of pieces of chat in and around about if you can buy a gift card in certain retail outlets. And that is something that we are working on in the next phase of the, the development of the Scotland Loves Local programme alongside a digital card version. So we'll be sharing more about these exciting initiatives as we progress further through the programme. But for today, I'd just like to say thank you to both Phil and Colin and everyone who was involved to the, for the webinar today and also for your time. And if you need anything, Nicola and I's addresses are on the screen and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much and enjoy your rest of your day.